you guys ready to see some rare CDs? <laughs> That's enough now. Hello, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. Now, as you all know, I collect CDs. Super obvious. I've been collecting CDs since I was a kid. As long as I had been given money, I would spend it on CDs. Even if I knew I wasn't allowed to buy CDs, whether that had been allowance from my parents that I was supposed to spend on other stuff, or birthday money, whatever. I typically would go over to my local record store and buy whatever CDs I could get my hands on. And through the years of collecting CDs, I have encountered it all. I have the stuff that is super accessible that anybody can get their hands on. Uh, I have stuff that was put out independently by local bands or friends. And I also have some stuff that are considered rare. So I took a bit to go through my collection here and seek out the albums that I have in my collection that are deemed as rare or hard to find. And I have a lot more rare CDs than I thought I was going to have, so I think I want to make a series out of it. Consider this volume one of however many volumes I'm going to make out of this. It could be an ongoing thing, I'm not sure, but for right now, I know I have two volumes worth of rare and hard to find videos that I'm going to make. So we're gonna start right here, right now. For this volume, I'm gonna be talking about CDs that I have brought up in sporadic videos that I put out in the past. Some of these I haven't talked about in a really long time, so it'll be interesting bringing them up again. But before I jump into the CDs themselves, I do want to define what I mean by rare or hard to find CDs, if it isn't already obvious. The main thing about these CDs, and to state the obvious, is these are CDs that are rare and hard to find. And that could be for a multiple amount of reasons. They could be out of print, very limited copies were maybe made, maybe limited to 100, 500, 1,000. Some of them are worth a lot of money because, well, they're sought out and because they are limited copies or limited editions, whatever. And some of these CDs are things that you cannot get in the US. You have to import them from a different country. Maybe because they didn't get a US release. Maybe for whatever reason, it's more common to get in a different country than it is in the US. Who knows? And that isn't to say that all of these reasons are on one CD. These can be all the different reasons, all intermingled. It could be an expensive CD from a different country. Uh, it could be a limited release that's worth a lot of money. It could be out of print, but still not very expensive. The whole idea is these are CDs that you are not going to find in a record shop as easily as you would find something by, I don't know, System of a Down or Tom Waits or Alt-J or any kind of common band. And I'm going to be placing a couple stipulations on these CDs. The first being I'm not going to be allowing reissues unless the reissue is also very, very rare. And the second stipulation is I'm not including bootlegs. Bootlegs, while sometimes very rare, like the Kraftwerk CDs that I talked about in my bootleg vlog, they don't count. They're not official. I'm going to be talking about official stuff here. And in addition to all of that, I will be including a couple of statistics here. I will be first stating what they are, why they're rare, again, going back to those reasons I talked about earlier. Are they accessible digitally? More specifically, can you get them on iTunes, Amazon MP3, or Bandcamp? Those are kind of the big services that are around nowadays. How much they're being sold on Discogs, as well as what the lowest price was, the highest price was, and the median of those prices. And finally, where I got my copy and how much I spent on it. One more thing to mention before we jump into the CDs. For some reason, while I was editing this video, I noticed that the audio decided to stop working at various parts. 
So, instead of trying to salvage it, there will be some instances where I'm going to have to use the audio from the camera itself. It's not going to sound as good as my microphone, but it's better than nothing. So, in case you hear a difference in the audio, that's what's going on. So, with all that being said, let's finally jump in to the CDs themselves. And the first album I'm going to talk about today, I have Grouper's Way There Crept. Grouper is an experimental folk musician, dabbling in stuff from the psychedelic folk sound to the just straight ambient, to the drone, to the noise, and even just doing standard piano music. Regardless of what album you listen to, what you'll hear is something that's full of atmosphere, ghostly vocals, skeletal guitar playing, just an overall spooky kind of sound. Her most famous album is Dragging a Dead Deer Up a Hill, along with the AIA double album that she put out, both of which are phenomenal and you should absolutely go check out. This right here is her very first album. This was initially released in 2005, and eventually was reissued in 2006, but even the reissues themselves are just as rare. They were also pressed on vinyl, which I want to say are just as rare as the CDs, but I haven't looked at that information, I only focused on the CD themselves. You can definitely get your hands on a digital version of this album on iTunes and her Bandcamp, but as far as physical copies go, you're gonna have to do some hunting. Now, according to the Discogs information of the 2005 release, the lowest price paid for it was $19.74, the highest was $43.96, and the median between the two of those was $33.94. At the moment, the current listing prices for this album include $19 at the very least and $45 at the highest. And most of these are non-US sellers. I managed to find my copy of this album at Amoeba San Francisco, and I only paid $20 for it. In the grand scheme of things, that's pretty inexpensive, and I'm really glad I found this album Partly because I love, 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 love Grouper and everything she does, and partly because I love collecting rare albums. I think I've collected pretty much all the sort of common albums that I've wanted, and now my tastes, unfortunately, have gotten a little bit more on the pricey side. So anytime I find something that is relatively rare, maybe a little expensive, I can't resist on getting it. So Grouper's Way There Crept, fantastic album, absolutely worth checking out. Next album I have for you today, I have Olver's Natin's Madrigal, plus a bunch of other words that I can't pronounce and I'm not even going to try to pronounce because it's in a different language. Olver has probably one of the most complex discographies out there. They have changed their sound so much. They started with black metal, they moved on to experimental metal, they switched over to trip hop, then started doing ambient, then started doing post rock. They, they just, they are not consistent. They decide on a sound, they do it for an album or two, and then they switch it up completely. This is Olver's second album in their discography, and it's one of their black metal albums that they released in 1997. The legend goes with this record is they were given a bunch of money from their label to go and record it. And instead on using it to rent studio time, get instruments, whatever, they spent it all on drugs, bought a car with it, and they took an old antiquated recorder, went out into the forest, and recorded what we hear on the record. The members have gone out of their way to say that it is not true that they recorded it in a forest. They did, however, spend the money on drugs and a car. Regardless of it not being true, it's still kind of a fun and cool story to think about when you're listening to this record, just because of how raw it sounds and how dark and chaotic it is. Kind of like your perfect atmosphere for a black metal album. There were limited copies of this press and release in the US on CD. It did get reissued in multiple different countries, but the US never did get that CD reissue. Instead, they got the vinyl reissue several times, as a matter of fact. And you can easily buy the digital copy of this on iTunes. But if you want a physical copy, you're gonna have to do some hunting. According to the stats on Discogs for the 1997 release, 
the lowest price that someone paid for this was seven dollars the highest price was twenty dollars and five cents and the median for that was eleven forty nine current listing prices for this album go for approximately twelve dollars to seventy four dollars most of these are non-us sellers and the cheaper copies are the promo edition, not the official release. I managed to find my copy at Amoeba San Francisco, and I also only spent $25 on it. I consider that a win in my book, mostly because if I wanted a non-promo edition of this record, I would probably have to import it. And of course, importing it would hike up the shipping price, and I would probably end up paying more than 25 bucks for it. And the fact that I found it out in the wild is even more exciting. It's moments like that where you go into a record store and you find that rare something, you just can't help to be like, holy shit, when am I ever going to see this again out in the wild? So I snagged it. This is a great record, probably one of my favorite black metal records, definitely my favorite over record in their discography. Check it out. Staying on the topic of black metal, the next CD I want to talk about today, I have Agalox of Stone, Wind, and Pylor. Agalox is my all-time favorite metal band, and sadly, they broke up about a year or two ago. This particular CD is their very, very first EP. It was released sometime in 2001, and it had very, very limited copies that were pressed. Bootlegs do exist for a relatively inexpensive price, but that in and of itself is a little difficult to get your hands on because some websites don't even allow you to buy bootlegs. Back when I bought this CD, you couldn't even really listen to it or buy the digital copy of it anywhere. But as of recently, since the band has broken up, and I think they wanted their legacy to live on, you can get this pretty easily on iTunes, on Amazon MP3, and on their Bandcamp. But as far as pricing goes, according to Discogs, the lowest price someone paid for this was $9.99, the highest was $64.84, and the median between that was 39 and a nickel. As of current listing prices, I only found one, and they were selling it for $75. I got my copy of this from a third-party seller on Amazon, and I only spent about $44 on it. Just based on the one listed price on Discogs, I'd say that's a winner. I love this CD. It has some of my favorite Agalox songs on here. It's an album that nicely blends dark ambient, folk, and black metal all into one amazing thing. I highly recommend you check it out if you are a fan of black metal or have never listened to Agalock. They are fantastic. May they rest in peace. Maybe they'll do a reunion. Hopefully. I don't know. Please? Give us sour bread and bury our dead and kneel to the cross on the wall with a bird at the stake or a drunk at the wake Just kneel to the cross on the wall The next CD I have for you today, I have Buckethead's The Elephant Man's Alarm Clock. Buckethead has probably one of the biggest discographies I have ever seen. Some of the things he's never released in a physical format, only digitally, and most of his stuff, primarily his earlier stuff, he has made physical copies of, but they are very hard to find. And this is one of those things. This was released sometime in 2006, only on CD, never got a vinyl version. The big reason this album is so hard to find is because it was released independently, not on a label, so very few copies were made. You can easily buy this digitally on Amazon MP3 or on iTunes, but as far as finding the physical copy, not only are you going to have to do some hunting, but you're also probably going to have to pay some money for it. At one point, I even found a physical copy at Amoeba San Francisco for $50. 
but at that time, I was absolutely not going to drop that money for it. Now, according to the stats on Discogs, the lowest price someone paid for the CD was $26.30, the highest was $54.95, and the median between that was $45. As for current listings, there are none, as of right now. I'm sure at some point someone will put one online for sale, but you're gonna have to probably put that on your watch list. I got my copy, well, on Discogs, and I only paid $20 for it, a fucking bargain. Now, on my copy, the album art is a little warped due to some water damage, but you can hardly tell, I don't really care, and the media looks good, it just looks like a pretty solid copy, so I was okay with it. I'd rather pay $20 for this than the $50 I saw at Amoeba. If you need a place to start with Buckethead's music, I highly recommend checking this one out. It's a fine display of his guitar work, his experimentation with different genres. Overall, it's just a fun album and really, really cool. Next CD I have for you today, I have Failure's Fantastic Planet. This is the band's third album and widely considered their best. They were able to blend grunge with space rock and create something really unique for music coming out of the 90s. Now this one might be a bit polarizing for some of you because I have actually seen this album several times at Amoeba San Francisco for pretty inexpensive prices, but as far as internet prices goes, they're up there, and they all say that they're rare. It's probably out of print, hence why people are charging so much for it. You can easily buy this album on iTunes and Amazon MP3, but as far as physical copies goes, you're gonna have to do some hunting. And I would definitely choose your price wisely because this has so many different price ranges. Now, I have a bit of a history with this album. I bought a copy of it at Amoeba San Francisco for only $10, but I experienced a very strange problem in that the last three tracks I could not get on my computer. The disc was not being read at all. It would skip, it would skip, it would skip. For some reason, it would play on my car speaker perfectly, but as far as getting it on my computer went, it was just not happening. And me being me, I had a hard time living with that. I really wanted a copy that wasn't going to have any problems, so I ended up buying it online. But we'll get to that in a sec. As far as the Discog stats go, the lowest price someone paid for this was $7.50. The highest was $49.88 and the median between that was $24.99. The current listing prices on there go for about $12 to $77. The cheapest listing even states that the first track skips a little bit, hence why it's priced pretty low. I bought my copy on Discogs, and I ended up spending about $40. I think in the grand scheme of things, that's kind of a loss, but at the time I was shopping for this online, there weren't many options for listings, they were all roughly that price, if not a lot more. But you know what? That's sometimes the price you gotta pay as a collector. And I love this album so, so very much. And I know for a fact this one works. I got it on my computer, it plays fine, it looks good, it's great condition. At the end of the day, totally worth it. And I highly recommend checking out this album if you've never listened to it, it's great. The next CD I have for you today, I have Aoga's Zenith Beyond the Helix Locus. Aoga is an obscure Finnish dark ambient band. They put out some really fucking freaky sounding stuff, but if you're a big fan of ambient and experimental music, you might dig it. This is probably one of the most uniquely packaged CDs in my collection. For one thing, it's not in your standard jewel case or digipack, it's in this piece of cardboard with all the artwork printed on it, and then the disc itself is just in a plastic package here. And it's likely because only a thousand copies of this exist, and the likelihood is these guys probably folded and 
packaged all a thousand copies of it themselves. To add to that, this never got an official US release. You can't get this in America unless some random record store has it. Instead, you're gonna have to import this one. And to go even further for that, you can't even buy digital versions of this, at least not on US Amazon MP3, US iTunes, or not yet on Bandcamp. You can definitely listen to it on YouTube, but as far as buying digital copies of it, forget about it. So at the end of the day, if you want a copy of this album, you're gonna have to buy it online. But thankfully, the prices aren't that bad. According to the Discog stats, the cheapest somebody paid for this was only $4.40. The highest was only $13.19, and the median between those was $11.54. Right now, the current listing prices are approximately $10 to $20, but again, most of these are non-US sellers. I bought my copy from Discogs, and I only paid about $5 for it, which I had to import, but again, $5 plus whatever the shipping and handling was, not too bad. Most experimental records are funny because a lot of them are rare only because few copies of them were made, and the price point is kind of dependent on how popular they are. Some of these records, they're made, nobody really pays much attention to them, and therefore prices go down. But if this were something that everybody wanted, this would easily go for a lot more money. So I'd say if you're a fan of a band, experimental or not, and they put out some albums that are probably limited because they could only afford so much. Get your hands on a copy, because you never know. It could suddenly gain popularity and everybody wants it. You could sell it and make some money for it. Or it could just be one of those things that you say, hey, I have one out of the thousand copies that exist. And that's the case for me. Alright internet, the last CD I have for you today, I have Vagus Nerves Low Pan. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that I was going to be talking about albums that I had talked about in various other videos before. I haven't talked about this specific album in another video, but I have definitely talked about the band. Vagus Nerve is an amazing experimental group that composes music inspired by the supernatural, aliens, witchcraft really anything that's kind of creepy and horrific. They only ever released two albums. The second album you can get fairly easily, not just from Discog sellers, but I think you can even buy it off the label's website. This album, however, you cannot get easily. Only 500 copies of this were ever pressed. Sure, you can buy a digital copy of it off their band camp, but for CD collectors like myself, it's really, really tricky to get. According to the Discog stats, the lowest somebody paid for this was only $7.50, the highest was $19.23, and the median of that was $11.50. As of right now, there are no listings for this CD. I managed to get my copy from Discogs, and I only paid about $20 for it, which I had to get imported. But the thing is, I waited ages and ages for this to come up on the website. It was on my watch list, and the moment I got the notification, I jumped on it. Who knows how long it's gonna take for another listing to go up. I'd say just listen to it on their band camp and buy the digital copy just to support them, but if you want the CD, get it on that watch list and jump on it the moment it goes up. This band is phenomenal, absolutely love them. I'll leave a link to their band camp so you can check them out. Some of the best experimental work I've ever heard. This and their second album are great. Definitely look into them. Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. Instead of recommending me stuff to listen to, I encourage you to share some of the rare things you have in your collection, be it CDs, vinyl, even cassettes. What are they? 
How much did you pay for them? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below. And also, if you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support, and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post an album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So, thank you all so much for watching. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To, signing out, goodbye.